G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing our off-season series where I'm going through each of the 18 teams and uh, putting a little New Year's theme on each video and, and talking about some resolutions each club might have going into 2024, specifically to try and improve for the upcoming AFL season. So if you're a D's fan, you may or may not be aware that I've been working through individual team-based videos for a number of weeks now, and I'll include in the top right icon of this video if you click on it, I've done videos on Melbourne's best 22 for 2024, as well as a video projecting their best 22 three years from now. So if you wanna go find some other D's content on this channel, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. And while you're there, if you don't mind terribly considering subscribing to this channel, I make a lot of AFL content, particularly at the moment, I'm making one to two videos a day. Uh, and if that sounds up your alley, then this would be a great channel to subscribe to. So I'd appreciate it if you got around it. So let's talk about the Ds uh, and adding some context for, for their resolutions for 2024, I guess. Obviously, a team that uh, won the Premiership in 2021 um, in a commanding fashion and since then have been pretty good in the home and away season and failed right at the last hurdle when it gets to finals, um, which we'll talk about in this video. So for them, it's, it is a couple of key areas where they need to improve um, and it makes it somewhat simple to try and analyze, but at the same time, it might not be overly simple to fix. So we'll crack into what those resolutions are. There's a couple of resolutions that I think are kind of obvious and kind of elephants in the room and I'll start with one of them and that is their mid forward connection and that's the specifically the connection between their midfield getting the ball inside 50 and then to, to put scores on the board. So we know that the Ds have been uh, experiencing scoring issues for a little while now, particularly last year. In particular, it came up short in the finals and uh, it didn't help that their accuracy in front of goal was really left lacking. So they kicked seven goals, 11 against Collingwood uh, and then nine goals, 17 against Carlton and narrowly lost both of those games. They were the number one inside 50 side last year. So the team that got the ball inside 50 more than any other, but ranked only seventh for total points scored. And that indicates that the getting the ball in top 50, it's just that perhaps the quality of those inside 50s aren't fantastic. Their forward line's not being efficient, and we know they're inaccurate in front of goal. So I'm not necessarily prescribing the solution. Perhaps they need to you know, play with it a little bit more there through the corridor is one suggestion, but generally speaking, finding a cleaner way to get the ball inside 50 is going to be a massive consideration for them this year, whether it's working on their forward line mix, which I'll talk about in a minute, or also the method that with which they actually move the ball. And that's why I think someone like a Caleb Windsor, their first round draft pick, might feature earlier than we expect for this particular reason. So let's move on to the forward line mix, their next resolution, and that is to, to find a answer that they're happy with with respect to their key forward experimentation. So we know that this has kind of been a work in progress. I'll probably lock in Jacob Van Royen is probably going to be an absolute lock to make this team. And I'd imagine their starting key forward alongside him will be Harrison Petty, who experienced a couple of games up forward for them towards the end of the year, where he kicked a bag of six against Richmond, and he kicked a couple of goals against North before he was eventually subbed out. There are alternatives on this list. There's Ben Brown, there's Tom McDonald, although I'd imagine they're not quite in the frame for round one, in my personal opinion. Behind that, you've also got a developing prospect in Matthew Jefferson, who's been on the list for a couple of years now, I think. Forgive me, sorry, he's just been on the list one year. So again, probably you know a 20-year-old key forward prospect. That might not be the answer, although it'd be nice to see him play some AFL footy this year. Overall, that what they just want is some sort of solution, whether it be Harrison Petty or perhaps a resurgence in form from someone like a Tom McDonald or a Ben Brown. But at the moment, I'll back in Petty. Demons fans, let me know in the comments what's your ideal key forward mix. The third resolution I've got for them is nice and short and sweet, and that is just to get Clayton Oliver back on the field and playing his best footy. Now, we know he played 15 games last year before he struck down with injury, and I think the Demons didn't specifically struggle, but when you take away one of their best midfielders, it's obviously going to have an impact on their performances. And in the 15 games he did play, he had 30 disposals and seven clearances a game. And you factor in before that, the previous two seasons, he he'd accumulated 56 Brownlow votes. So we're talking about a genuine top-line mid of the competition who has obviously gone through some off-field stuff this year as well. So that will be a huge factor, I suppose, in, in just how good Melbourne are this year, in my opinion, is to what extent Clayton Oliver is back in the side and playing his best football. Now, let's talk about the other elephant in the room that I was alluding to, and this is their finals performances. So they're going back-to-back -back in terms of straight sex... <laughs> in terms of straight set exits in the last two years. So uh, after finishing top four the previous two seasons, they've lost all four finals since winning the premiership in 2021, losing most recently 
in close games to Carlton and Collingwood, and last year being sent out in straight sets, losing at home to the at the G to the Brisbane Lions. So a little bit of a worrying trend here, and I'm sure there's not too much analysis to put into it. We know that goal scoring was a, a big problem in this year's final series. The team is talented enough, but for whatever reason, the hurdle, the final hurdle of getting through the final series uh, has eluded them for the last two years. Another resolution that's a little bit less obvious and a bit more obscure is uh, probably just trying to get a little bit of value out of the forward half recruits. So they've traded in Jack Billings and Shane McAdam this year and probably have differing expectations on the two. Uh, Jack Billings is a player that is a bit of a forward midfielder who obviously had a strong pedigree as a junior and had a decent career at St. Kilda and had largely been robbed of a lot of football lately through injury, But uh, having just played three games last year. But he could maybe start in this side as depth. But if they get to a situation where Jack Billings is genuinely creating depth for their team and coming in and playing a role, I think that would be a great outcome for uh, Melbourne. Shane McAdam, by contrast, I think they imagine they foresee probably starts in their best 22. I think he battled the injury again in 2023 for the Adelaide Troys. He played just the seven games and kicked 12 goals. So again, uh, as a more of a genuine forward than Billings, I could see him as more of a genuine forward than uh, Jack Billings. I can see him having a more immediate and profound impact on their, their scoring potential that's for sure. Uh, but either way, getting some value out of these guys will be a key focus for them. The next point is, is a more broad one about just continuing to nurture young talent. So when teams get into the premiership window, naturally we, we tend to see youngsters often get less opportunity, not really as a general rule, but we I, I don't think Melbourne are a position where they could do that. So I'll, I'll just list some specific names that I'd like to see get regular time at AFL level. So we know Judd McVie is pretty much already best 22, as is Jacob Van Royen. But with a somewhat aging list at Melbourne, they do need to keep one eye on the future as well. And guys like Caleb Windsor, I'd like to see early. Colton Falstrup, I'm not talking about round one, but at some point through 2024 to continue his development. I did talk a little bit about Matthew Jefferson as well as a second year key forward. And another player is Blake Howes, who I think went pick 39 in 2021. So there's a few options there that they can cycle in and out of the team for sure. And just keep developing that next layer at Melbourne because like I said in the uh, best 22 from th in three years from now video, Melbourne do have a somewhat of an aging list that will see a little bit of turnover in the next few years. So making sure these guys are ready to go when that time happens is going to be important for them. The next one is it's just more of a broad one and uh, this probably sort of ties into the other one. So it's probably not the, the strongest point on its own, but I just think genuinely compete for the flag. And what I mean by that is I think on star potential and best 22 quality, this Melbourne side should be the best team in the competition. I've been thinking that for years, to be honest. Like I said, there's so many mitigating factors. We know that the forward half mix uh, for a start, missing Clayton Oliver for a period of time last year, their finals performances um, have obviously left a lot to be desired. Having said that though, they boast some of the absolute top line players in the competition. The best ruckman in the game. Petrarca is probably the second best midfielder in the game. Clayton Oliver is probably only a handful of players behind that. And his best form is probably you know even closer than that. So when you consider how powerful and strong that midfield is, how, how defensively sound their back line has, has been for a number of years now, it's just working about that forward line because it has been a little bit makeshift up to this point. So overall, what I'm saying is Melbourne need to be genuinely competing for the premiership, and I mean in the grand final mix at the end of the year, to say that they've gotten anywhere near fulfilling their potential in this season. And finally, we'll end up with a nice little list management one. Um, I think one thing they do need to do this year um, in terms of draft or trade is add another young Ruckman to this list. Where you consider Max Gorn is gonna be 32 very shortly, or he's 32 now, I'm not sure. Other than that, the only two recognized Ruckman on their list are Will Verrill, who is 19 and hasn't played a game, and 19-year-old Kaya Farris-White, who is a 206-centimeter wobble player, who I presume is a Cat B rookie. Uh, but other than that, no other true recognized Ruckman. I'm not including Tom Fullerton, even though you probably could, but he's more of a forward Ruck who averages 2.6 headouts a game in his career to date. He's only played 19 games. So long story short, I would like to see the Ds probably add a young quality Ruck to their list, either through the draft we're trading one in or whatever, because at the moment, those stocks look a little bit bare. Having seen Grundy just obviously leave the club and replace him with Fullerton, that, that's fine for the time being. But I think going forward, adding a ruck is something they need to do in 2024. Anyway, guys, that is my take on the Melbourne Footy Club going into this new season. So let me know in the comments what you agree with and what you disagree with. And of course, if you're a D's fan in particular, add some resolutions of your own. I'd like to hear from you and learn from you as well. But as always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.